Another water shout comes your way. Another glorious day in store at Goodwood. Welcome back, Dave Orton in the chair. Delighted to say Bruce Millington comes and joins us for the first time this week. Very much looking forward to it. And what a race we've got. This Sussex Stakes is unbelievable. Cannot wait. Day one, bit of momentum in or? Uh, Goodwood was galling and Galway was good. So a little comeback last night. But, uh, <laughs> We've been yeah, working on that I'm one. a little bit behind. Happy days. One man had a really good day. David Jennings joins us again. DJ. Yeah, great day. Yeah, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing starting the week that way. But uh, yeah, everything just kind of clicked at Goodwood with Space Blues and Battleground and a uh, few others. So fingers crossed that will continue, Dave. Uber confidence. And Pat Cooney from our sponsors, Bet365, joins us. Pat, a day for the punters yesterday. Yeah, you say just about on balance, uh, the three shorties all seem to win and winning good style. The odd good result here, but uh, I, I would say not much in it on the opening day. Mm, I reckon they fancy their chances today. Let's get right into the action, tipping all the way here. Don't forget to sign up to bet365.com using the referral code SHOUT365. That's £5 you've put in for up to 100 bet credits. Terms and conditions apply. 110 then, another Phillies handicap to open the day. We've got a hot pot here in Wayalak. Big eye catcher at Royal Ascot indeed. Back up in distance here. We had a great day yesterday. Let's give the floor to David Jennings. Yeah, this is extremely boring, Dave. Uh, Wayalak was probably my kind of Goodwood banker of the week. Um, I think she's good. I think she's very good. I think she's better than the mark of 87. She won her side convincingly in the in the Sandringham. She was drawn 18. The winner on Asses was drawn 1, came on the far side. And she was just very lonely for about two furlongs. Uh, she got one in the length of and a quarter. She's gone up three pounds for that. She's crying out for the step up and trip. And it's one of these ones where it looks too good to be true. You know, everything is right. Like the trip, the track, the ground is perfect. She had a good run in the Sandringham. She's unexposed. It's just everything seems perfect. So that's obviously when something goes wrong. But I just don't know what could possibly go wrong. <laughs> it's the prize thing, I guess. When you're as confident as DJ, you don't mind piling into a shorty. What about yourself? Yeah, I mean, look, ed everyone's found Waliak. There's no secret in that. And unfortunately, so are the bookmakers, you know, they're not stupid. They've seen all the signs. And uh, she's just, she, she's the likely winner. But is she value? Probably not. Looks like we're going to get the dead eight. So I'm going to take a chance with King Rafe Beckett's Shemade at a bigger price. Kel surprise. Well, she's, <laughs> I mean, it's not just blind faith, this one. I mean, she's run a decent race in that classic trial at, at, at Kempton, yep. featured pile driver et al. And then ran a really good third behind Franconia, who's obviously decent, cool. um, and Cavaletta. So I just think if the eight run, and hopefully they will, I think each way she's a Half decent alternative to the jolly. I took the same view actually. I don't really. I, I had an okay day yesterday. I don't really want to be piling into Whale like I bat Whale like at Royal Ascot. I, 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 what with it, you know, it's Goodwood first race. I thought that B more was the interesting, you know, obvious alternative. Form Frank yesterday in the last race with ACF as well. Pat, how's the market looking? Yeah, it's all one-way traffic. This Waliak is so strong. As Bruce alluded to, as bookmakers, we, we, we saw her coming, didn't we? We all know everyone thought she would be well handicapped. She ticks an awful lot of boxes. And I think the current second favourite, Gazia or William Haggis, OK, stable in red-hot form. She's not run for 298 days. There's not really much confidence behind her at this moment in time. Shamard has been popular, actually. That's now about 14 from 16, uh, Rafe Beckett. But... You know, as bookmakers, you're giving us a Gosden horse, you're giving a Haggis horse, and, you know, informed David Manusi and Andrew Baldwin horse. Uh, I think this is one of these races where if she suddenly went to, to seven to four, I would jump over the other side of the fence and be a punter, really. So uh, I, I think she'll win. There's a hot pot in the first. It's Waliak. Race two, then. Two mile four. Stamina at a premium. Some old favourites in this. True Destiny and Sensational back. We actually agree on this, don't we? Yes. Se sensational. There you go. You <laughs> it's a it, name game today, it isn't is. it? It's a, it's a sensational each way bet, yeah, I think. Tom Segal, very keen on it as well. He is, yeah. I mean, uh, second in the race last year. Um, had True Destiny behind him. Always runs really well at Goodwood. Yeah. Uh, I just think there's everything in his favour. I mean, he's, he's waited to reverse the form with Oleg and on the Pontefract run. Last time out, he ran on soft ground, which he hates. I, I just think this horse is, you know, it will be really hard with five races, five places yeah. to keep out the front. Yeah, True Destiny's way ahead of him in the market, isn't he? He does come into it in better form, but he's not the easiest horse to get right. DJ, where did you see this one going? Yeah, I can see where you're coming from there with Sensational. Um... Just, I know it was ground last time, but God, it was an effort. Like, he was under pressure, being scrubbed along after a furlong or two. Um, uh, not a real strong opinion, but I thought that, the, as, as uh, our old friend Graham Rodway hates, uh, the most solid option was uh, True Destiny. Um, 
look, he, he, he comes into the race on the back of a good run, I thought, at Newbury. That was a really good handicap, I thought. Rishun won it. Uh, Rajinsky, who was in form, was second. And there were some good horses that were in form, like Moon King, Rochester House. It was a decent race, and I thought he ran really well. That should leave him spot on for this. He was third in the race last year um, off a three, or I think it was four pound lower. But I thought it was a better race. Like there was, there was, there was more kind of seasoned, established horses in the race last year. Timoshenko won it for Sir Mark Prescott, and uh, I actually thought a repeat of last year just might be good enough. He's four to one. There's no real value, but I did think he was the most likely winner. It's one of those races, Pat Cooney, isn't it? Where you could best you could back six and still not, maybe not get close. What does the market say? Are there any movers? Yeah, True Destiny is, has been strong in the market, as DJ says, third in the race last year. And it probably was a better race, in fairness. And, of course, Roger Charlton is in top form at the moment, two big winners on Saturday. A solid enough favourite, but over this distance, the race is going to take about 20 minutes to run, isn't it? I think a horse that has been back, the smart champion from the Simcock team, I think you have to be lenient with his run last time out. It was a, it was a disappointing run, maybe too soon after a good run at the Northumberland Plate. Fourth in the Northumberland plate reads quite well, I think. And uh, he's been the sort of the each way angle in the race. But true destiny, you know, he stays stable in form. He's a worthy favourite. But, you know, you could have two or three stabs at this race, I think. I totally agree. But we've given you a little bit of help on the marathon. Let's move on to the third race then. Mile four handicap. This really does look quite tough. Mark Johnson's got a great record in this. I've gone for Glenn Ties. I was on the horse that he beat called French Asset at Windsor last time. He could not win. Tony behind me. Have you been watching Windsor this year? You've oh, had yeah. to be on the rail. You've had to be prominent. It's almost impossible to win if you're not doing that on the faster ground. This horse did everything wrong at Windsor and still won. It screamed Glorious Goodwood to me. I'm glad you've got a strong opinion. This is probably the hardest race of the week. A ton of progressive three-year-olds over a mile and a half. Uh, I've gone for Mambo Knight. I just think he's... He, potentially his value. Some of his two-year-old form is decent. He, he was very close to quadrilateral. Um, he actually beat Khalifa Sat, who obviously got placed in that weird derby on his last start. And he's, he's won two decent races this year. So with very, very minimal confidence, I've gone Mambo Knight each way. Let's go to the man of uber confidence and DJ not went out of the park here for us. Yeah, I, this is arguably my strongest fancy today. Uh, I fancy win o'clock for, for Roger Charlton. Charlton. And Thomas Greytracks, just to pick you up on another pronunciation, Dave. Here we it's go. Glenties, not oh, Glen Ties. Not another Glenties Ennis Diamond, is it? I, I, I've finally got that right. Unbelievable. Uh, famous Donegal Football Club. Uh, so the people from Donegal will be on to you. Glenties, uh, I think they're county champions, I think, at the moment. But anyway, uh, win o'clock. Yeah, I thought Thomas Greytracks kind of smuggled this one home the last day. It was, it was, it was more, it was easier than the winning distance suggests against Bronze, uh, Bronze River. Like, was off it early at Leicester. It was a funny sort of race. It was a three-runner race. But there were three decent horses and uh, I thought he won it easily. He won that off a mark of 84. He's gone up to 88. I thought he'd get about £7 for that given how on top he was at the line. Um, stable in form. Uh, that was over a mile and two. He won in spite of the trip at Leicester. He's he's a better horse over further. It, it, nothing went right at Ascot. Holly Doyle rode him at Ascot, and it just didn't go according to plan. He was only six to one. He was really keen early. And then when he went to make his challenge, he was hampered by a horse kind of that hit his back end. Um, I think this is could be a three-figure horse in the making, uh, given a bit of time. It's run off 88 here. I think one o'clock will win. You just tipping favourites all, all day, DJ, <laughs> or are you actually going to take a chance Oof. with anything today? Um, at the moment, at the moment, Bruce, that's just joint favour because Carlos <laughs> Felix is also uh, 9 to 2. A 9 two, to 2, it's not that bad of a price, Bruce. I'll tell you Jesus. what, there's a bit of two shame going on here, isn't there? Ne pronunciations for me. DJ's on all the favourites. Pat Cooney, give us another angle. Uh, well, I quite like Carlos Felix. I, I was watching his Ascot run last time. There, there were only four runners, but I, I was just watching it with no strong opinion. I thought, wow, what was that? And it was uh, he was stepping up from a mile to a mile and a half. And I just thought, yeah, I could be very much part of that bandwagon whenever he rocks up next. He went up £10 for it, which wouldn't thrill me. But um, he was so impressive. I thought, yeah, I'm going to keep with this fella uh, and, and, until he gets beaten, really. So uh, it's a wide open race. We all, we all know that. But I just keep looking at that recorder. I was watching it this morning again, thinking, you know, if it had been a 14-runner race, he would have still won handily enough. So uh, I'm a Carlos Felix fan. His trainer in the members club, Dave Simcott, says you're going to have to be way ahead of your mark to win this race. You can read it there. It's hot. Right then, two-year-olds back onto the course come the Molcombe Sprinters. Absolutely love this race. Pat Cooney, I'll come to you first with this. There's been a proper steamer in this race, isn't there? 
Yeah, uh, Steel Ball has been the big mover. Now, when he won his debut at Nace, uh, he was very well back. He only cost 15000 as a yearling. So, you know, the odds compilers were saying to me, oh, look, he's only a cheap buy. You know, we respect the stable. A real, real shrewd outfit, this. Uh, but he won ever so handily. Connor Keane is, of course, a real good booking. No real collateral form for any of these, really. So you just got to go with your eyes. I thought he was a very taken performance. Um, and I, I think he'd just about be my selection in the race. I think, you know, to come here after a fluent win at Nace, you know, the connections know what they've got. And I think they've got a pretty decent one. It is a wide open race. You can make a case out of Night on Earth has been popular, Rasheen Murphy aboard. But this is one I think the Steel Bull, he might just be that horse to follow. Mm, DJ, let's come to you with this. A line on Michael O'Callaghan and indeed Steel Bull. Yeah, Michael O'Callaghan would be regarded as quite a decent trainer. He's a young up and coming trainer. If you remember, Kieran Fallon rode from when he was over in Ireland. He would have had like Blue de Vega when Blue de Vega was in Ireland. And uh, a horse called Now or Never, uh, who won the Darrenstown 1000 Guineas trial. And, and funnily enough, it went to uh, Australia and they changed the name from Now or Never to Now or Later, which was quite interesting. But uh, yeah, good trainer. Uh, does get one ready first time out. So I'd say, given the way to cash the came for Steel Bull, this horse was ready at Nace. Um, I, it's very hard to know how good he is. Um, I've had Paul Keeley on the phone all week asking me, you know, find out about the steel ball. I think he's a good thing in the mall come. He is absolutely mad on this horse. He he just saw something at Nace that he thought he was seeing something a little bit special. The second Den Star was 8 to 11. A little bit of a kind of an enigma. Den Star travels well in his races. Doesn't him often find that much. Urban Step was third for Johnny Murta. His horses are in form. Um, a few horses didn't run their races in that. But um, it was a good performance. The one that I like is significantly for, uh, for Carl Burke and Ben Curtis. I think this horse should be three out of three. Uh, Carl Burke said it in his, his, in his race and post quotes. Uh, first time out against Mooker, a horse that uh, Bruce knows well, uh, was beaten in the neck, flew home. Second time at Doncaster because it flew home at, Na uh, at Newcastle over five. It got to the front too early at Doncaster over six. And then Ben Curtis just didn't really know what to do last time at Sandown. He absolutely travelled all over Gussie Mack and Jojo Rabbit, who's won since. Um, uh, kind of got to the front, wandered around a bit. I think they know what they need to do now. They need to come really late and significantly. This horse has loads of speed. I think five furlongs of Goodwood is made from. I cannot believe he's not favoured. I think nine to two is a huge price. Yeah, I covered that race. It was, it was the National Stakes, Dave, wasn't it? A sand down. Mm. The race has worked out well. Gussie Mack goes for the Vintage Stakes tomorrow and uh, wouldn't be without a chance in that. I just, it's the one draw that put me off, Dave, on that. Let's talk about Steel Ball. Keels, last Friday on What A Shout, it was his big call. If this horse comes over, it wins the Malcolm. He's gone deep. He certainly has. And I mean, you know, the run was impressive. It doesn't necessarily look the deepest race of all time. So I'm perfectly prepared to believe he can win. What I want to know, though, Dave, is that if you've tipped significantly at around about nine to two, five to one, why are you not interested in International Dream at 28 to one, who was beaten three quarters of a length by him in that race at Sandown? They've both had three races. There's no reason why significantly you should have a kind of progression edge. I just think if you look at the prices, this is a really unglamorous horse trained by Richard Fahey, but he's a huge is each way tip? price. Yeah, International yeah. Dream. I mean, he's a massive price. DJ? Yeah, the only thing was I thought at the race uh, at Sandown, and I've watched it over and over again. I can see your point, and I like that kind of angle where you see horses at bigger prices that were not beaten by, far by horses at shorter prices. But I just watched that race at Sandown, and I just came out of it thinking to myself, my God, significantly is by far the most superior horse here. And uh, I think he's a most. I think your horse could be placed, but I think significantly it's the most likely winner. I'm going to chuck Night on Night on Earth in there, which Pat did mention. Uh, Oshie Murphy and Andrew Balding really quite impressed with him in a decent time at Windsor as well. Fascinating, is the Mulgam. Right then, three fifteen, another Group One. It's the Sussex Stakes race of the season. No question. No question. Absolutely no question because it brings together the three-year-old and the four-year-old form. We don't really know how good any of the uh, English or Irish 2000 guineas are yet. We Better than know. the Eclipse. Pardon? Better than the Eclipse. Yeah, because there's three-year-olds in it. I mean, mm. the Eclipse was good, but, you know, it was, it was a match between Sizzle. two really good horses. This is going to be fantastic. Seven runners. It is a really fascinating, wide-open race, and I just I cannot wait for this. Yeah, you've got a bit of a strong opinion on this, haven't you? I've got, one, I've got one very strong opinion, that Mahartha is a terrible, terrible <sighs> price. He's this got horse, such a huge fan club. Yeah, I know, but it's, it, he's become the most overhyped horse in training. That, that win in the summer was a group two. Yes, it was good. Yes, he's beat Dukes of Hazard, what, three and a bit. Space Blue's come out and beat Dukes of Hazard. He, Equally he ran all right, though, Duke of Azure. He did, he's good, but this is Group 1 form. How on earth is he a shorter price than Circus Maximus, 
who slayed him in the Queen Anne. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he was unlucky. He was unlucky. <laughs> yeah, he was a bit unlucky, but it was five lengths behind the winner. Circus Maximus won three Group Ones, just touched off in this by two darn hot. A ridiculous prize. The punters are finally latching onto him. So I re if Circus Maximus wins this, I will not lose money. I'm backing him. But my main bet, and it goes along the theme of what I was saying with the previous race, Dave. If you fancy significantly, a significantly bigger price you've got going to National mm. Dream. If you fancy Siskin, who's still clinging on to favouritism here, Vatican City in the Irish 2000 Guineas was yeah. pretty much as unlucky, not unlucky as Siskin, because Siskin won, but had as equally troubled passage as Siskin. And when he got out the po pocket, poor Drig Beggy, he absolutely flew. Now, everyone's saying, oh, it's seven runs, it's seven runs, you can't get each way betting. Some bookmakers are going three places on this, and, and Pat Cooney's outfit, Bet365, got a very nice thing called Each Way Extra, which enables you to get three places. You've taken advantage so of So that's how I'm going to back Vatican City. I think he's the, for, not forgotten horse, he was never remembered, but he, I just think he's well, the value. It wasn't in the derby, was it? Yeah. yeah, but I mean, that derby's a freak show of a race, yeah. wasn't it? It is, it is absolutely fascinating. DJ, is Siskin now too big a price? Would you just about come down on him? I, I would. Um... Very, very unlike me. Uh, I, I, I don't have a strong opinion. Um, I do think Siskin will probably win. Um, I know Keels doesn't like him at all. But um, just on Bruce's point with Vatican City, I, I, I'd be very worried about a mile at Goodwood for Vatican City. I know, um, obviously, he didn't say in the derby, but this is a quick mile where you need to turn a foot. And I'm not sure he has the ingredients to win a Sussex. I think he's a very good horse. But I just think with Siskin... At Goodwood, and you see the horses that have won this race over the years, it's that instant acceleration that you need two out when the race is really hotting up. And of these, I think Siskin has that biggest turn of foot. Like, he won all his race over six last year. Um, he won at Nace over six and three times at the Curra. He's beaten Monarch of Egypt, who we saw um, has loads of pace in the jersey. Um, I just think with Siskin, the race is going to bubble up nicely. Just from the three pole to the two pole, I think he's going to be travelling best. And I think he's going to just have that acceleration that's going to get him to the front. And I think a good one he's going to get home because I think he just about gets a mile. Um, and I think that's what it's going to come down to. It's a fascinating, fascinating race. But he's ridden by a master in Colin Keane. And uh, I just think this could be a real crowning moment for Geraldines and Colin Keane. I know they've got their two classics already. But um, I won't be backing them, but I'll be wishing them on. Um, I think Siskin will win. DJ, go and look at the Irish 2000 Guinness again and tell me, Vatican City, tell, tell me Vatican City hasn't got a turn of foot. He was absolutely I, I, imprisoned. And as soon as he got out, he flew. How can you yeah, not call that a turn of foot, man? Yeah, I don't think he has as good a turn of foot as Siskin. I think I think like he, he did stay on quite nicely. He was beating a length in three quarters. But like... Like the winner won easy, Bruce. Like uh, I, I just I would be I would be shocked, absolutely shocked if Vatican City turned around the form with Siskin, and therefore you're only playing for your well one place and then two places if you do the the, the each way extra. Um, I, I I'd be honestly I'd be really surprised if Vatican City turned around that form. Oh, we're starting to cook up now, aren't we? This is what we wanted to hear. It is a race that polarizes opinion. Pat Cooney, you've been waiting in the wings. Tell us about this each way extra. Well, each way extra, uh, it, it, I actually think it's too good of uh, value, really. And But uh, however, what you can do, you can pick your each way terms in the race. You know, all punters in the country groaned when there were seven runners in this race. We all like the dead eight and each way bet. But you can actually bet three places. And Bruce will be tempted by this. You can actually bet four places on the race. Look at Vatican City, for example. He's 18 to one in the current prices. If you want to back him each way a quarter of the odds at the three places, he's 14 to one. And get this, he's 10 to 1 to be in the first four, each way first four places. So there's terrific <laughs> value there. One of, one of the keys to the to, to this each way extra, though, you, you mustn't really back a, a front runner going up in trip because once they get headed, they fall out the back of the telly and they, they, they disappear. But the each way extra value, you can back these sort of, I'm not saying these horses are plodders, the strong stairs who you might not fancy to win, but you think, yeah, he'll be in the first four, he'll be in the first three, etc. So there, there's an angle there. But it, it is a very much of interest to in the race. But as for the race in general, poor old Cameco, a Guinea's winner, he hasn't got a mention so far. He's been very easy to back in the market. I actually like the four-year-olds. I'm a bit lukewarm about the three-year-olds, so I am in the Mahatha fan club. I've only just joined it after Asker and poor old Circa Maximus. So, I mean, no one seems to give him any love, but he wins Group 1 races, so I'm going to go for the hardened battle four-year-olds. He's got a massive fan club. I'm with you. 
because I like Siskin, it was a price thing. Kills last week on What a Shout was saying, worst price I've ever seen, five to four Siskin. Hard to disagree with that. When he went out to nine to four, you're thinking, hang on a minute. He's got the one draw, isn't he? So a bit like in the Irish Guineas, Dave, he went round the inside. When he came out, he stank in the market that day, Dave, didn't he, uh, for the Irish Guineas? Yeah, well, people didn't think he'd stay. Uh, it was obviously a stamina thing. He'd never ran beyond six before. I, I, I don't know. I just think it was interesting even after the race, like Gerlines immediately were going to go to it. We're going for the Sussex. Um, I, I think they thought all along that this was the, the group one he might win this season. They were a little bit worried about him getting home in the Guineas. And, uh, you know, a mile at Goodwood, you know, it, it's a speed test this is. And I think he is the fastest horse in the race. And that's why I think he went, look, I, I can see your point. And I know Bruce's point on two. And I... I think both of your selections in the last two races could be placed, but um, I, I, I just think Siskin will win. I've got Siskin on top, but I think Vatican City has to be included because exactly that. We see uh, with Maidana yesterday, forgive a horse a bad run. 10 to 1, a quarter the four in a seven <laughs> runner race. Happy days, we're all getting on. Race six then. Once the dust has settled on what will be the race of the season, according to the panellists, it's only a tricky Phillies condition race. I found this definitely the toughest race of the day. Give me the two-mile four race over this race any day. Will Sprite just go and win or...? Well, it's hard to say. There's six runners. Three of them ran against each other last time. They also ran, all of them finished behind Sardinia Sunset, who runs in the 245. So yeah. you might want to see how she runs, and there will be a bit of a market adjustment if she, depending on whether she runs well or badly. Yeah, I've gone with Sprite. I just think that the form looks half decent, but it's not with any great degree of confidence. I'm hoping I will still be... Picking through a very exciting Sussex stakes by the time this one is off. Yeah, it's going to take some catching, Dave, this one, isn't it? Yeah, another favour from Bruce, you see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> another market leader, he yeah. says. Touche. That's the only, horse, <laughs> the only horse I'm tipping today that's a single figure price, my friend. <laughs> it's the only winner you'll tip as well. Uh, I think uh, I think Sprite will win as well. Uh, I thought this performance at, at York last time, um, it was only, I think it was only about 10 days ago. But I thought it was explosive. Like there was, it, it, to me, it didn't look that bad of a race because you had Sawton in there who ran in a, a four-runner race at Lingfield, where I think the winner is quite useful of, of Mark Johnson's who runs on Friday. Um, and uh, this was obliteration. Like it was absolutely flawless. Uh, loads of speed and uh, Clifford Lee that day just let him do his thing because first time out at Doncaster, he tried to kind of hold him back. For all the world, that was six furlongs at York. For all the world, he looked like a five furlong sprinter. Um, he's running against horses here that are rated in the mid-80s. I just wonder, is he a little bit better than them? Like, significantly, he's rated 93. I don't think he's that far behind him. So that brings him to a mark of low 90s. I think it's going to be good enough here with Sprite. We're all pulling each other up, Dave. It's a filly. Um, Miss Jingles is oh. the one that I've gone for. And I, with no great degree of confidence... I did the sand down run last time uh, for the paper, and it, I think it will produce winners, so it's a good old thing winner for me. Pat Cooney, give us some help, please. Well, Sprite has been the best backed in the race, and a big day for David Redford, the part owner. Of course, he's tied up with the Cameco connection, so big day for him. Um, she was in visually impressive. That was six, dropping back to five. It didn't look like it would be a barrier to her chances. Uh, but the price has dried up a bit. I've got I fancy Miss Jingles only at the prices, really. If you said to me they're nine to four each, I would take Sprite, but they're not. You can back Miss Jangles around about seven to two. And it was an improved run at Sandown last time. I, I wouldn't discount, you know, any of the other three main ones in the market after that. But uh, Miss Jingles at, at, at seven to two excites me more than Sprite at current seven to four price. A real tricky puzzle, but a two-way split mm. for the team. Right then, time for the finale. Seven furlongs at Goodwood Big Field. First thing to say here, Pat Cooney, significant non-runner. Society line comes out. Must have been a huge readjustment in the market. Yeah, very much so. And of course, he, he was the, the horse. I think a lot of us thought we had a real chance, but he had a bad draw, but he's not turning up now. Yeah, so the, the shaking up in the market. Toro strike of uh, Asheen Murphy and Richard Fahey. That's now the favourite. And then it's uh, Josephine Gordon's horse, Arigato, who's got the good draw in stall number one. Uh, it really opens the race up now, I think, with Toro strike now favourite. It was, it was a good enough run at Ascot last time out, and the horse has got form around the track here last season. So I see wisdom in people fancying that one. And uh, Arigato is just one of these good handicappers in stall number one. So if Josie can get a good early pitch, that's going to be very competitive. But a deep old race, I think we might need a couple of goes at this one. There's going to still plenty of value in the race. Deep Intrigue has been an interesting mover. Um, he, he's probably around about still double figures. I could see him starting a single-figure price, but you, you can... 
have plenty of goes at this one without coming up with the winner, I think. Mm, Toro Strike for me, one of my strongest on the week, actually. Watch that back in the Buckingham Palace. Richard Farr, he wasn't in form at all, was he, at Royal Ascot time? He's banging him in left, right and centre now. Oshie Murphy takes a ride, three from four from the yard. He's got stall nine, don't think that would be a problem. Watch back that one in your members club. It's hard not to back him, I think. Where have you gone? I've backed a horse who is, I'll tell you what, when he won his first race back in 2015, he beat a, a Group 1 winning sprint filly called Marsha. Wow. Zhuang, Zhui wow. Feng. Zhui oh, Feng. Can you believe Feng, this is, a, this is a horse that people have, uh, have either got a big payday on and done their dough on, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think he'll lead then? And, and I, I, think the... it, I think he'll lead and I think he'll, he'll give you a great run for your money. I mean, he, he, you know, you, you could expect him to, to, to drop right away, but on his, on his good day, he'll stick around for a bit and hopefully get in the places. So uh, without any great confidence, because it's obviously a brutally difficult race, I've gone with Jui Feng. Shows you how long he's been around. Marsha, didn't yeah. we? We'd never have that on a morning watch show. Dave Jennings, did I hear you groan then in the background? Yeah, uh, I just gave uh, Stouty a ring there and I said, I'm tipping too many favourites. Any chance you could take society line out, Bruce Millington has given out to me. And he's taken them out straight away. So uh, it's fantastic because I was so tempted. Like, we have to send our tips through to, to Rob and Dan beforehand. Um, I was so tempted. I had the first four letters written, Zui Feng. And then I was like, no, we need winners. And I think society line is the most likely winner. He's now an honour. Zui Feng. This horse is so interesting. He's down to his lowest mark of all time, down to a mark of 90. He's been dropped four pounds for the run at Ascot. Now, the run at Ascot, look, he led, he went too quick and he dropped away. Um, like some of his form, even the, the run prior to that new marker when he was forward to Bell Rock, like that was that was a decent enough run. Like he led for a long way there. And you kind of say to yourself, does he really deserve to be dropped four pounds? I think the handicapper has been reasonably nice here. The horse hasn't run since 2018. But when he won that race at Windsor, he beat Oh This Is Us. He was rated 108, and I think he went up a couple of pounds for that. So he's back down to a mark, a stone and a half below his best. He likes Goodwood. He's ran, re he's won at Goodwood um, over a mile and two, and he's ran some big races over seven furlongs. He was third to Salute the Soldier, and he was third to Apex King off 105 in a handicap. I just wonder, is this his big swan song? I really do, because he likes the track. Amanda Parrott has a really good record at Goodwood, and I just think Everything seems to be falling into place for Zui Feng. I think this could be his last win, and hopefully uh, me and Bruce are going out together with a winner. I think one of the handicappers, Naps, have put this up as well. One of the guys, other handicappers, Naps, as well. Two ticks for Zui Feng. He was a cup winner as well, wasn't he? Mm. Oh, we're all talking ourselves into this a bit. Pat Cooney, where are you going? Uh, I, I just think it's an open enough race. I'm probably going to end up thinking something like... Uh, I think maybe deep intrigue appeals to me, but you, you look at Zui Feng... I think he said 40 races. I've probably put him in 40 play spots. He is that type of horse, isn't he? And uh, I, I see him going off at a single figure price because, you know, you strip out some of the, the you know, the, the more murky runs. Some of his form is quite good. He, he was going to run it in our Bunbury Cup, but the ground was too soft for him. So Connection still think he's, uh, he's the type of horse that's got it in, in competitive handicaps. So he's one of them. I think, you know, the tipping lines are going to land on him as well. He, he'll probably shorten up a bit and... Uh, uh, fortunately, it's race seven, so I won't be putting him in my play spot this time around. But uh, yeah, he's a contender. It looks like an ultra competitive finale, and I think the lads have just sparked off a gamble. Right then, let's get to the naps. Four timer for you on the day. I'm going Toro Strike, despite the love for Zui Feng. I think he'll win the last. Bruce Mennington. I think Sensational is a sensational each way bet in the 145. Lovely. David Jennings. Uh, win o'clock in the 215. Pat Cooney. Uh, I'm just going to keep it simple. I think Wally Ack will win the opener. Will it be a lucky 15 or a four-timer? There are your naps. Let's sign off then for day two. Another glorious one in store here. What a shout. Fantastic. Bruce Mennington, see you back on Friday. Yes, looking forward to it. Happy days. Let's hope your coffers are boosted by then. DJ, you'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, annoying everybody again. They'll be well and truly sick of me. <laughs> More favourites from you, please, on Wednesday, on Thursday. That would be great. Jesus, that's harsh. Pat... Jesus, that's harsh. <laughs> nine to two, five to one. Listen, as long as you're banging them in, the punters don't care. They love you, Dave. So do we. Pat Cooney, we love you too. You'll be back tomorrow. Yes, uh, looking forward to it. Happy days. Let's hope you're wiping your tears away after this one then. Don't forget, gamble responsibly, guys. You've got another three days left. Loads to target in on. As Bruce said, some lots of value out there, some big prices. Don't be afraid to take them on. Don't forget, of course, to download the free Racing Post app. You can do that on the App Store or the Google Store as well. Don't forget to get your questions in for the panellists. You can do that below or on Facebook or YouTube, however you're watching on Twitter. Hashtag what a shout. Until then, enjoy the day.